Okay, what I want to show you is this. What this is, is a wind generator. And it's a wind generator that will work even if the wind isn't blowing it. <laughs> that is just awesome. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to take it to pieces and show you exactly how it's made and we're going to do a little bit of demonstration on the performance and I'm going to show you exactly how you fit it because um, basically anywhere down the bottom end here you fix it to a bracket and on something side of your building, uh, your roof, a pole, a lamp post, it really doesn't matter. So if you've got a lamp post and we put it on the lamp post like that it will work just fine. Now this isn't my idea. Okay, on um, this one, I came up with a few basic thoughts on the wind belt generator. And this is kind of a combination of the wind belt and a vibration energy harvester. But I was talking about the wind belt generation and looking at that, and um, several suggestions were made on the members' channel. Now, I am immensely proud to know the members because I've always hoped that the members' channel would be something more of a a discussion where we worked stuff out. And this is a kind of an example of exactly that. This began its life as a wind belt. And then on the members channel with discussion of just about every member actually, but there are two names I'd like to pick out especially, and that's Jason Witt for the original suggestion of the twisted coil, and um, Ryan James Lloyd for pointing me at the um, Zoob tube, because this is very similar to the Zoob tube as well. So those two guys made a, an, a special contribution, but everybody made a contribution for certain. And this has been developed by me and everybody on the members channel. So it's one of the reasons I'm going to do a full disclosure of it, because uh, I think that the things that are developed like that really belong to everybody and belong in the public domain. Now, I haven't seen anything like this. Maybe something like this does exist. Maybe there's a patent lurking in a cupboard under the stairs. I don't know. But this has been invented, and that's a story of what invention actually is. If you sit on your little secrets hoping you're going to make your million, somebody's just going to overtake you. If you share it and work it, you get a better result than you possibly could all by yourself. All by yourself, your thoughts narrow. In conversation with others, they broaden. And that's what's happened with this particular thing. Anyway, it works by vibration, really. When you bolt it to the pole, the wind will vibrate it, and it will generate because of that. When there is no wind, but there is other vibration, it will also vibrate, which is fantastic. So let's say, for instance, we took a load of these and bolted them onto the lamps on a bridge. All that traffic passing by would shake these enough to generate a ton of energy. So it's a really good thing to do just by vibration or just by the wind, because the wind will vibrate it, but it's incredibly sensitive, so lots of other things are going to vibrate it as well. Okay, so that's enough blabbing on about that. Let's have a look how it's actually made. Now, you'll be able to see quite easily it's a piece of pipe. And on the bottom of that piece of pipe is this coil. Now, I took this coil from a synchronous motor. You find these in microwaves. You open it up and you'll find one of them in. And that's the coil. And you'll see that attached to there is uh, some magnets. The magnets are just stuck onto this piece of rubber. This is a rubber balloon. The rubber balloon is made like that. I'll give you a close-up of it. And then you'll notice there's a drill hole in the pipe here. And if you look carefully, again, you'll get a close-up. There's a little bit of something in there being tensioned at the top. So let's have a better look at that in close-up. So the body of the device is just made out of this bit of pipe. Now, I only made it from this bit of pipe because it's what I had. There's been no effort optimization. All I've done is try to see if something will work. So I just took a bit of random PVC pipe and cut it to a length that is actually about 76 centimeters for no reason whatsoever. I'm sure you could cut it longer. I'm sure you could cut it shorter. I'm sure you could use thinner pipe. I'm sure you could use thicker pipe. It really doesn't matter. And on the end of the pipe, you'll see this bit of rubber. Well, that is, is a rubber balloon. It's just an ordinary child's balloon. And in there, we've got two plastic spacer discs. I cut those from a bit of three millimeter acrylic. And then there's a roof bolt between those two. And that roof bolt has been adapted a little bit. Just undo it for you. It's a six mil bolt, incidentally.
And I don't know if you can see there, there's a little two millimeter hole drilled through the bolt. That takes a feed of the center piece. There's your spacer, there's your balloon. There's your other spacer, and there's the bolt. And I flattened the bolt off. And I flattened the bolt off so I could stick some magnets on it. So it goes together, bolt, spacer, balloon, spacer, nut, and then we feed it our little bit of wire in there. It's not actually wire, but I'll come to that in a minute. And the reason it's like that is because that will tear if you don't do it. So there's no reason they're that size at all. It's just a random thing I guessed at to make sure that the rubber balloon didn't tear. Now, it's probable that you've made those different sizes, different materials, you get different results. I don't know. It's certainly worth trying. All I then did was, in this hole here, is feed this. This is an artificial muscle. Now, if you don't know about artificial muscles, then check out the video that I did on vibration energy harvesting, where I go into exactly how to make one of these. It's really easy to make. It's actually made out of a bit of strimmer wire that you stick in a drill, but watch that video and you'll get exactly how to make those. That feeds into there when the whole thing's assembled, another nut on it, and it traps it here. Now, if you look in the center there, right there, pull that out for you, says he, <laughs> I can't get at it. There we go. There's an artificial muscle. So that artificial muscle is connected here, running all the way up to here. Now that is just a couple of bits of plastic with some 8mm rod that's got a hole in it. The other end of the artificial muscle feels into that hole, and I can twist that so that I can tension the muscle. When I tension that muscle in there, what I get is an energy store that will vibrate that diaphragm with the magnets on it. If we vibrate that diaphragm in the coil, we get energy production. Now there is a bit of stasis to it, so that will vibrate just by putting a fixed point and letting the top be hit by anything at all. A bit of wind, a bit of random vibration, or if it's held and the thing it's holding is vibrating, there's inertia at the top, so the spring in the center is extremely sensitive to that vibration and will transfer it to that diaphragm. So that's how it works. If you look at a zoo tube, you'll see that a zoo tube actually is very similar. Only a zoo tube has two closed ends, a closed end here, a closed end here. And that vibration transfers into sound out of those closed ends. We've got an open end pipe and a single closed end. And the reason we've got a tuning fork is because we need to tune this to the antinode if possible. If you don't know what that is, again, have a look at that video on the vibration energy. It'll explain everything to you. And that's how that's made. So it's extremely simply made. Now this hole here actually lets wind in. So when the wind blows across there, it also <laughs> vibrates that muscle. So that muscle can be vibrated by the wind directly, or it can be vibrated by the wind hitting the outer pipe, or it can be vibrated by passing vibration from things like traffic or foot traffic. And that vibration is transferred into the movement of that diaphragm. Okay, so I've glued that coil on. I've actually just attached it with super glue on the little bit of rubber. And we're going to connect it up now onto the multimeter. And the multimeter is obviously reading um, amps. So we pop that on. And if I tap the other end, there you go, 277 milliamps. That's awesome. Obviously, it depends how hard I tap it. It depends how hard it's going to be uh, blown by the wind, because the wind would do the same thing. You fix that there and blow that by the wind. It's going to do exactly the same thing. So there we go, a wind generator that uh, works whether the wind is blowing or not. Okay, so I've never seen anything like that. So if it exists, Celavi, if it doesn't exist, it's now public domain and belongs to everybody. I think it's well worth uh, investigating, actually, because it's uh, obviously astonishingly cheap to make. It's obviously really robust and would just last forever. Uh, and it's obvious that there are improvements that can be made to this that I just haven't made. 
So we don't know what the best size is. We don't know what the tension is. We don't know whether that material that I've used as the artificial muscle is the best material. We don't know if the diaphragm um, area is good. We don't know if those little things that we put on to restrict the waveform on the diaphragm is any good or not. We don't know about the cold size. It's just a ton of stuff we don't know. What we do know is that as a design, it's robust, it's cheap, and it works. Cheap is really important. It's got to be simple to make, it's got to be cheap to make, or it never gets made. Make it cheap, make it simple, then you have a much better chance of making it. So it's now a public domain thing. If anybody wants to research it and develop it and make it better or just make this, then I think that is really the way forward. Now, a lot of people are looking for the magic bullet. They want a generation scheme that will generate hundreds of kilowatts and be only one thing. I don't really think that's the way forward. I don't think we're gonna get a magic bullet. I think the um, answer to the energy problem is not one big thing, but lots of little things that add up to be one big thing. Colleen said something actually in a post that I agreed with. If you wanna get rid of the kilos, shave on the grams. Or if you like, you wanna get rid of the pounds, shave on the ounces. You do lots of little things, you get a big thing. If you're trying to go for that magic bullet, then you're probably gonna be a long way before you get it. With something like this, we can make this any size you want, including really thin ones. And I think a lot of really thin ones would be kind of exciting and interesting. But a new invention, I think, one that was invented by me and the members together, and one that is now in the public domain. I hope that you enjoyed watching it. I hope that you pick it up. Uh, I've been told, actually, to ask if you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, subscribing would be great. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>